Okay, so Fusion Universes and Angry Titans. So first, what we one thing we know about Fusion Universes and Angry Titans is both of these teams they're gonna be playing some goats, dude. These two teams are strong in goats. The goats is what they will play. They will not they will not chase things out. They they know they're good at something. They're gonna execute that something. So yeah, so Fusion Uni, uh, I guess. Fusion Uni playing a variant of GOATS. I did say that both of them will not play non-GOATS composition, but Fusion Uni is playing the Mei, though I have to... I mean, we have to admit that, you know, even playing a Mei, that's still a GOATS, because it's just a variant of GOATS, right? And why do you play Mei in... Uh, why do you play Mei in this map? Because uh, this map has very little entrance. You have, like, one entrance here, you have, like, another entrance here, and most of these entrances you can wall off very easily. And if you win the first fight with a Mei, then you are pretty much you pretty much have a good chance of winning the rest of the fight because what may really really does is it allows you to win first point by cheesing and then it allows you to win the rest of the points by by may war so it does by two things first uh first first fight you use your unpredictability right that the enemy doesn't prepare for may all that much because you, you don't really scream against a may all that often so you you're not very very uh you know you haven't really practiced against a main wall that much. You don't know when the speed boost. You don't know when to engage. Do you engage like they're playing goats, or do you have to be careful of the wall, or do you do you want to push the May? Do you try to uh, beat an icicle? Like what do you do against a May? Right. We we could talk about theories and concepts all day, but when it comes down to pure practice, if you haven't practiced against a composition or you don't practice against a composition much, your reaction is going to be slower. So you win the first fight off unpredictability, and then you win the second fight off the terrain, because as long as you have main wall in a optimal terrain, then Mei is always like a fucking strong champion, right? So that's, that's how the Mei composition works. It really doesn't, it really doesn't like synergize well. It's not about synergy, it's not about strength of composition. It's it's kind of half cheese, half Mei's war literally does that. Okay, let's see. Double the pen epicness, yes. Like, I actually got like, open two epic pen and use like both of them at the same time. Two mouse and be dexterous. Unlocking 23 seconds, both teams already out of the gates. And you see Fusion University rolling. Yeah, this, 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 uh, this map is always like entertaining to watch because, you know, when Elusive Wall rides here, right, it's actually, there are multiple win cons here, right? So, May walling someone off is a win con. Like, you see? Someone's here, right? May walling someone off is a win con. Another win con is just the Lucio booping anyone into the into this pit. Because once you go into this pit, to get out of this pit, it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very long walk. So most of your the rest of your team either dies or they have to back out. If you back out, if you back out of this at this point, it's very very hard for you to push back in because the enemy once you back out, right? Once you back out, the enemy will push up. They'll push up and they'll hold. So this time you have to push into the point against enemy teams that are using these covers and it's really really hard once you So once you move out, you don't expect to move in without using like resources, like sound barrier, rally, that sort of stuff. You can't get back in without using something against a good team. So anyway, uh, we see the first the first action taken by Nice uh, War. So essentially this is a 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a 6v4. Now it's gonna be the rear matchup. Actually, not so they're probably on a rush, right? Not quite the rear matchup with Nice on that May looking to use those walls to isolate Los I Nice on us. And you see... They're actually not... Fusion University rolling out. It's gonna be the rear matchup. Actually, not quite... The yeah, they're not, they're not really rushing even. The rear matchup with Nice on that May looking to use... So you think that you wall two people, you kind of want to rush. Why, why is Chancic not rushing? Uh, it's going to be the rear matchup. Actually, not quite the rear matchup, but nice on that. Oh. So Chancic is a little bit more... Uh, he's playing a little bit more defensive because I think he just has no uh, confidence of actually... Yeah, of of actually getting, like, value. So this is where, like, Goats is... Goats gets advanced and confusing. If these two characters were around here, these two characters were around here, let's say this red line right here, so you have one guy, two guys here, right? Chansey will probably push aggressively, but the moment the main wall, uh, they place the main wall, you, you realize that there's actually a lot of space between like these tanks and the, the, the main wall. So immediately these two characters will start backtracking, right? They'll backtrack from this line, they'll start backtracking. So Chansey and they all, they have to push up. And once you push out, you become weaker. You definitely become weaker because, uh, first of all, you need to use your 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 bubbles. You need to use your bubbles to push up. Did they use their bubble early? Yeah. Wait, it's kind of weird because Bernard actually didn't use any bubble. I didn't see any Zaya bubble coming from him. Because if they if they want to push these two players, right, then they need to use their projected bubble. Without projected bubble, what happened? What's gonna happen is Chansing's gonna uh 
swing and he's gonna take like a fuckload of damage. Also, maybe he's scared of uh, the Lucio as well. That's why he's not really pushing. Because right now, what we are trying to look at is even though they they landed, they, they got a two man war. Why aren't they pushing the enemy team? Uh, it could be a couple of reasons. Maybe Ch Chansik just, yeah, maybe Chansik just got apprehensive. Chansik also needs to be careful of like the Lucio right here. So, yeah, maybe he saw the Lucio and decided not to push past. Like he he got one swing and then he decided to back off or something. Actually, not quite the rematch. But yeah, so he, he he backs off. We. Yeah, could he have continued pushing? I think he could have, but yeah, it would have been dangerous. Yeah, the thing about first fight, right? The thing about uh, Oasis University is this point is very open. There's not many covers for Ryan. You can see like where can a Ryan play? So if you are the Ryan, you swing out and then you you misjudge. You play a little bit too aggressively. There's almost no place for you to go behind cover. So most Ryans tend to play more defensively and more passively in the first fight. In uh, when you have no outs in a no out situation, May to use those so maybe Chansey could have pushed, but he decided not to take the risk. That's fine as well. Walls to isolate. So that's really bad for that's really bad for uh, Fusion University because they don't have a diva, right? So if your wall gets no value, if your main wall gets no value, then essentially you it's very hard for you to win. Like it's very very hard for you to win against a team with gold, uh with diva. Because Diva is defensive, Matrix has more damage, so over time you'll get forced out. So you can see Chansik, they're going to get forced out of the point, and it's going to be hard for them to push back in. Okay, so Chansik actually is going to push back with a bubble. So it's kind of interesting because Bernard, uh, some teams, right, some teams like to use their projector bubble a little bit earlier, right? But Fusion University, they're actually holding their projector bubble, like, for a really long period of time. You notice that they didn't use their projector bubble just now to push, right? So they're using projector bubble right now uh, to take the space that they couldn't, uh, to take the space that they lost through a bad wall. So the sequence of events is like like that. So what happened first was nice tried to wall, nice wall. Well, it sounds like it's it's a nice wall, but what I'm trying to say is nice wall. Man, I, I, I hate this guy's name. It sounds like I'm praising whatever he does just cause his name is nice. Uh, yeah, okay. So, Nice tried to war, right? And then Fusion Uni, Uni. Okay, actually, you know what? I should label this as like 1A or something. So, Fusion Uni. Fusion Uni tries to push in. They whoop, They try to push in again because they, 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 they had the war, right? So, they're trying to punish uh, the enemy team because it was a 6v4. They try to punish. Try to punish. Realize they cannot punish. They decided not to punish in the end. Uh, halfway, they decided to punish. They they tried to punish, but they didn't commit all the way. Because th how do we know they didn't commit all the way? Because first of all, Chansik only swung one time. Second of all, Bernard didn't use their projected bubble, which means that you can see they are not really really serious about like pushing in. They they wanted to go for it, but then they realized that you know maybe it's just not worth it. So they tried to punish, but it was halfway. They kept the they kept their they kept their projected bubble, and now because they have no wall, Angry Titans is gonna push aggressively and push them. Uh, towards the main, you can see, you can see right here. Yeah, see, so uh, they are gonna use this bubble to push them from here to here, right? Well, I think one thing I didn't like about this bubble is it, it's not a great bubble. If you look at the timing of this bubble, right? Isolate Lulsers if possible. I on that May looking to use those walls to isolate. Yeah, so Lulish goes in, right? swings once and this one time is unprotected by the Zaya because the bubble he didn't bubble Ludi straight away right so what what they should have done what angry titans really should have done is uh they should have speed boost they should have bubble Ludish and then Ludish swing towards this clump right here he would have got like three people there would have been what 210 damage and it would have been enough for angry titans to back out to back out and then they would have been like all at half health and then that alone would have let uh, uh would, sorry that alone sorry not angry titans fusion uni would have been at half health right they would have lost a lot of hp that alone would have allowed the angry titans to capture the point for free for the first point for free but there was an opportunity they just didn't spot it so uh an overwatch league team would have done it correctly i think i'm very sure an overwatch league team would have done it correctly and, okay i can't see i can't say all overwatch league team i think most of the overwatch league teams from the screams i've seen uh, most of the overwatch league team uh would have spotted this opportunity and speed boost and bubble and punish so i know uh i think there was like i i, I get eu coach yesterday oh no not an eu coach any coach yeah true you guys know true from Envy, I think he was memeing, I think he was memeing, but he said that 
the uh British Hurricane, British Hurricane and versus versus Envy. Versus Envy. He said that <laughs> He said that the, 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 the level of the match between British Hurricane and Envy was better than 80% of Overwatch League. And I think it was memeing, but yeah. In the chance that he's not memeing, that's, that's very untrue. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so so what have we, have we seen so far? We have seen that Angry Titan failed to punish. Angry Titans failed to punish an opportunity that they could have punished. So that's that's one mistake. When you when do you buy a tablet to draw on screen? I do have a tablet, but it's in Singapore. I have a Wacom tablet. Uh, also, players be like, yes, okay. So you know, th th that's the whole thing about goats, right? You you need to know how to fight the first fight, but like setting up opportunities and taking space, setting up, uh, setting up opportunities is. It's really just like how you utilize space, all your mechanics, how who you discard, uh, how your rhyme position, shield management, right? This is what happens in the first 10, 15 seconds of every single fight. And that's different from every single team. All right, you want to take high ground, take flanks, your rhyme push aggressively, you know, setting up opportunities. Actually, acting on the opportunities is a second thing. Acting on opportunities. So what we can see is, what we can see is Fusion University tried to set up opportunity, failed. If you fail an opportunity, generally, as a matter of fact, generally, the other team will have an opportunity. So if you try to punish an opportunity and you fuck up that punish, it will be the other turn, the other team's turn to punish your lack of punishment. Because, yeah, because you fucked up, you failed, you, you, you needed to do this to win, you didn't do it, the tempo generally will switch to the other team and it will be their turn to punish your opportunity. So fusion opportunity was their main war. Wasn't that great? They executed it. Didn't give them enough advantage. They did, they decided not to take it. By not punishing it, the temple switched to angry titans to punish them. The fusion to punish fusion university because they use their war. So there are a couple of cooldowns down. There are an important cooldown down. So they can use their the, the fact that they have a diva to punish fusion university, right? But they fuck up. They fucked it up. So temple switch. Temple switch. So uh, whose turn is it now to punish? It's Fusion University turn to push back with their own projected bubble to punish Angry Titans because they overextended with a bad bubble and without uh, with a bad bubble and and and, and overextension. So we, we are, right now we are going to see how Fusion University punish uh, Angry Titans. So that's like uh, app and flow, right? Between two really strong goats team, you see punish, fail, punish, fail, punish. Well, I wouldn't say two very strong goats team because if you are a really strong goats team, the first time a team decides to punish. Uh, and it's a good like it's a good enough advantage. You will lose like the team that gets punished loses, right? So it's not really really strong goats team, but they are like decent goats team. So Angry Titans and Fusion University are decent goats team. What's happening right now is they punish, fail, punish, fail, but at least there's an app and flow, right? So, yeah. Now both teams exchanging out poke. Angry Titans in a bit of danger here. Lulshis already getting quite low. Fusion Uni going forward, but they lose Shantek. It's a counter fire on both sides, but Angry Titans. Fighting bit for bit right now. Bernard striking on back, and it's very even so far. Very even with a nice going down. There's uh, Angry Titan is going to win this. So, how did Angry Titans win this when Fusion U University was the one punishing? Same thing. Fusion University, Fusion University, Fusion Uni fucked up something. So, Angry Titans punish Fusion Uni again. So, the app and flow happens one, one, one more time. So, let's see why Fusion University didn't get a punish. Exchanging okay, so. Oh, this, is, see, this is a good bubble, right? This is actually a good bubble. So, Chansey actually got a good bubble. Yeah, the only reason why he lost so much health was because he, he got poked all the way here, right? Because they have no defensive metrics. It's it's hard to eat all the damage that a diva can should be eating. So he all he reached his target with half health already. But this was this is a really really good bubble. So Chansik swing right here. Chansik swing right here hits the diva, hits the Lucio, and hits the the Ryan. So you can see right at this moment, Fusion University uh, pushing up allowed them to get this HP advantage. So Lulish lost maybe 300 HP. Uh, Fat lost about 100. Emil lost about, like what, 400? 350? So between all of them, they lost close to 800. 800 HP, right? 800 HP. So yeah, just well played by... They're pretty much half HP. Like their total effective HP is pretty much halved. So what Fusion University really need to do now is make sure Chansik doesn't die. If Chansik doesn't die, 
Fusion University should win, right? Because they they have more HP. So if both teams do does like a hundred damage per second, the the guy with the less HP loses. It's just pure math. So Chasik just has to make sure he doesn't die. How can they do that? Eh, it's pretty hard. Where, where is the rest of Chansik thing anyway? So Chansik moves in, right? See, Chansik moves in. Bana doesn't. Bana is okay. Bana is doing his stuff. Snilo is moving in. But Snilo moved back. Okay, so what? Well, uh, okay, it's clear what happened. Oh, yeah, it's clear what happened. So Chansik went in. But they have no Diva, so no defensive matrix. Uh, the only people really helping this fight right now is Snilo and Bernard, right? Because you have Desire beaming down someone. And you see Snilo actually in the fight. Because you can see this stun right here on the, the Lucio is actually done by Snilo. So Snilo actually bashed the Lucio. But doesn't kill him. He drops to 50. Okay, he died. He does die. So he does do the, the bash. But Snilo dies for Not only Chansik died, Snilo died for that as well. So what's wrong here? Hmm. Well, not having a diva is actually vital, and not having a diva actually really is really bad for Fusion University in this push. Because once again, one you don't have a defensive matrix, which means that when Chansik push up, he was already at half HP, so it's easy for Chansik to die. Second of all, like this, this, uh, this main right here, fucking useless. It's, it's totally useless. Like, look at what May is doing. It's it's not because May is a bad May. It's not because Nice is a bad May. It's just cause May is not a great character in a brawl like when when two teams are fighting each other when two goats team are brawling each other uh may sure may has freeze but freeze takes time and and by the time freeze actually does anything chancic has died already see so you know where may is may is somewhere here may is somewhere here he's doing nothing <laughs> she's really not doing what what Fusion University need right now is damage, right? Because everyone is half HP. But Mei is not capable of damage. Mei is only capable of helping people do damage by, by CCing people. So, yeah. Tech, to fire both sides. Fusion Uni played correctly. It's just their composition doesn't allow them to do any anything else. But Angry Titans fighting bit for bit right now. Bernard striking on back. It's putting up to a Titan. They lose shot. Angry Titans have been to. Maybe if Chansik didn't lose so much health. Like, Chansik here lost a lot of health, right? So, Chansik here lost a lot of health. Maybe Chansik has more health, but it's hard to see how he can have more health. Because he, he has a long distance to travel. He has, like, all these distance to travel. So, he has to... He, ha he cannot hold up his shield. He has to... He has to drop his shield a little. Also, it's, it's a really, really good play by the Lucio here. Booping the Chansik, because if Chansik didn't get boop right, he probably wouldn't have died as well. Chansik would have just held his shield here, because his shield is pretty healthy, so Chansik would have held his shield and he actually wouldn't have died. But Lucio boop here was pretty pretty much killed him. Yeah, this is really good play by the Lucio. This Lucio pretty much won Angry Titans the fight. But they lose Shantek! It's a counter fire on both sides, but Angry Titans fighting bit for bit right now. Bur Holy shit, I need to review faster. Guys, we have been reviewing for a while, maybe half an hour, and I'm. I'm <laughs> the fucking point hasn't even opened. Striking on back, and it's very even so far. Very even I gotta do like speed review. I used to do that once, I try to review each map in like half an hour. Right now, it's like half an hour for the first one minute of the fight. First 30 seconds of the fight. Nice going down. There's really not that much damage left on the field. Not enough to sustain. Either. It's like the more educational the stream, like the more detailed, not not more detailed, but the more I have to reiterate my points because some of the things I've talked about I've explained before, right? But I like to explain again because I I don't know whether you guys were in the stream that I've explained the concept the first time. So like the app and flow thing is something that uh, it's it's like fundamental, but I feel the need to explain what app and flow is. So that, that extends the time of the stream. Otherwise, I'll be just be pointing out mistakes. Fusion Uni, they need to back up. They didn't get a great wall mm. to start out that engagement. I need to think about a way I review. At least in, on stream. Angry Titans with that early pick on a Chansic means that's a first oh. cap. Angry Holy shit. Titans with first control. Fusion University. We'll see if they can turn things back. Now there is a disparity. See, once you, once you lose, right? Once you lose with a May, most people switch out the May. Because the May is only good. If you win the first fight, May is good, right? You also you also enables you to win the other fights, but when you lose the first fight, May becomes almost trash because 
now you can't really utilize terrain because you are the guy pushing in. You're not the guy walling them from coming in. You're the guy pushing in. So if you call, your, 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 your main wall is pretty much like, it's very, very hard to, to use your main wall. Stop trying to make the May work. Trying to make the May work. It is university is a map where you can see a lot of value being got from that May. Gonna look to approach once again, set up the wall. Fusion Uni just gonna walk over the point. The wall is thrown out. There will be no retreat. Okay, good bubbles from both teams. Uh, see, this bubble is good, right? So. Okay, I guess one good thing about May is like angry titans generally should want to hold closer to the wall, right, to stop them from coming in main. But what happens is what's happening now is angry titans is ang is afraid of fusion university. They're afraid that fusion university will say uh, their right hand is standing here. Let's say their right hand is standing here, right? They're afraid fusion university will turn in and then just wall their right. And then, yeah, you know, fuck their right. Otherwise, between two GOATS teams, the reason why winning first fight is so strong in KOF and in this specific map is because you can just hold this area and really just prevent them from entering the point. And holding point allows you to, like, attack all angles. Yeah. But they can't do that because they're, they're, they're scared to do that because of the May. A lot of value being got from that May. Gonna look to approach once again, set up the wall. Yeah, so they get, like, all this space for free. They're not contesting this space. Angry Titan's letting them in for free. Is that a good idea? Hmm. It's it's hard to say. It's it's really really hard to say, cause the May is quite fucked up. But if you're too scared of the May, then you're doing what the May wants, you know. So I think it's fine. Okay, man, this is a, actually a really shitty war. See, this is a really shitty war because yeah, it doesn't trap anyone, right? It doesn't give Angry Titans a it doesn't give Fusion University a sizable advantage as well because even with this war. Angry Titans will just be fighting here. It's fine. They don't need to back off. At most, if they back off, they can back off this way. It's not that great. Anyway, there's going to be a clash happening. And... Yeah, so both Reinhardt goes in at the same time. Uh, both Reinhardt goes in at the same time. Lucio speed, is speed boosting uh, Lalish. So he gets hit by Chan Uh But both... I think both bubbles are good. See, both bubbles on these Reinhards have a lot of value. So, good bubbles from, from both teams. There'll be no retreat. Oh. Treat. They almost get the early pick off. Apox is barely able to get away. Fusion Uni though, looking at Moon Barrels of the Titans, but instead it's Karkar Burner falling. They dive too deep, but the crowd. Fusion Uni though, they almost get the early pick off. Apox. You see how useless May is. Barely able to get away. Okay, so he May May is trying to freeze, right? Barely able to get away. They almost get the early see, pick off. Apox. May is trying to freeze, but he May is scared to uh, go in too deep. Can't freeze because of the, the Ryan shield. So he decides to find another target. He decides to push off the D.Va that's flanking. Goes for the D.Va. Turns, turns back and realizes that, you know, <laughs> realizes that uh, uh, Fusion University is getting fucked. But his team is getting fucked. Because uh, Lalish is actually like pushing through the connector. So, like this area, Fusion uh, Angry Titan is fighting for this area of space. It's just easier for them to fight just because, yeah, just because they have a D.Va. Defensive Matrix does a lot. So defensive matrix blocks the damage onto the Rhine. Uh, that comes from the Zen. Defense. Uh, the 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 diva gets to boot people around. The diva gets to push in more damage than the 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 May. It just does like a fuck lot of damage. Looking at Moon Barrels, the spear all is thrown out. There will be no retreat. They almost get the early pick off. Apex is barely able to get away. Hey, Uni though. Looking at Moon Barrels, the Titan is barely. They almost get the early pick off. Apex is barely able to get away. The crowd is loving what they are seeing. Early rally out from Erky just to clean up. But instead, it's Karkar Burner falling. Barely able to get a wall to start out the will be Coach once again set up the wall. It, it's hard for. I mean, Fusion University has to lose this fight. There's nothing they really can do. First of all, May does very little. Second, that's a bad war. Third, Angry Titans is using a rally as well. So, rally really makes your team invincible. It's you pretty much lose this. There's nothing you can do. The the best thing Fusion University can do now is try to make sure that they get Blizzard and Graviton Search for the next fight. Yeah, that's that's that that would be a good fight for them. As long as they can get Blizzard and uh, a graviton search for the next fight, then it's still considered a good fight for them, even if they lose this, because they have no choice but to lose this. They, they can't. They, I can't. I can't see a way for them to win. You could trans, but it'll be just a waste of trans. And trans pushing in, it's still useless, because once again you have a May. So if you trans in to play aggressively, first of all, trans, 
Trance has a very, it has a shorter time than Rally, so you actually have to get value in that short time frame, and you can't do that with a Mei because, yeah, Mei doesn't get value from damage, doesn't get value from rushing someone. He gets value from wall, which doesn't uh, gel well with what you want to do when you rush with Transcendence. Okay, so they lose this. Let's see the next fight. The fuck? What the fuck, Lalish? Okay, this is just. This is just great play from Angry Titans. That's a bash at her. Great play, holy shit. Insane insane timing. That's like Overwatch League level timing. Wait, did the bash go through? Yeah, see, the bash goes on on Chansik. Chansik wasn't even prepared for it. Yeah, that, that was, this is Overwatch League level timing. This is insane timing. Good job. Okay, so that, that's my first praise for them. First praise for Angry Titans. That, that's actually great play. A oh, great timing. I wouldn't say great play because that's like a set player. Right? It's, it's not like insane strategically. It's more of like insane in coordination. Like that takes a lot of practice to do, to, to get that kind of timing. Goodbye, and good night. Fusion Uni, Goodbye, good night. Absolutely devastated. That, that's a pretty big shatter. Yeah. That, that... First team fight review, Pogo. Alarm pulls back around the corner while Fusion Run is pushing up. Should Alarm have moved up the little so he can output more consistent damage during uh, that exchange? Alarm? I mean, Alarm is pulling back because of the Diva, right? You're talking about this fight? You're talking about this fight, right? You're talking about this fight? Are you talking about this fight? Because if you're talking about this fight, then Alarm moved back uh, because there is a diva. Sometimes the diva plays this angle, and if everyone, right, because most of the time the brick is in the fight, right? So what happens is if the brick is in the fight, the Mei is in the fight, because the Mei is in the fight, the 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 Zai is in the fight, the Lucio is in the fight, because we we saw all these characters in the fight. What happens if Alam is playing here? This diva is, will assassinate Alam. Look at look at Overwatch League games. You'll see that a lot of diva actually plays on this side because you have the option to go in and you have the option to attack this way as well and defensive matrix this way. So a diva playing in this area is like gives you a lot, it gives the diva a lot of options, yeah. So what happens here is, yeah, Alarm has to move back because of the diva, and then Sneelo has to move back as well. So what's happening is, Sneelo and Alarm are distracted by a single diva, right? So what, what's happening in the rest of the map? You have a Rhine, a Mei, Zaya, and Lucio versus a Rhine, diva, uh, Briggs, Zaya, Lucio, Zen. Who's gonna win this fight? It, it, it's easily gonna be Angry Titans, right? Not only do they have Rally, they also have a D uh no okay diva is out because diva is distracting them. Not only do they have a rally, they also have their brick in the fight. So a brigita does a lot of damage, right? A brigita flailing in, brigita moving in and flailing can hit like multiple characters. You have you have your bash, you have your flail. The utility you have in a bra is immense, and Snilo doesn't have that. I mean, at least Fusion University doesn't have that because Snilo has to move back to help Alarm, and that's also why Alarm is not pushing out. Yep. There's nothing they can do. Uh, the only thing that maybe make sure that they won't lose the fight if they trans, trans to survive and then they use Graviton Surge, but it's a lot of resources and it's not even a sure win because of the reasons I spoke about just now. So it's not worth it. It's better for them to take the loss. Uh, tr take the loss, Make they use Rally, take the loss, and then come back the next fight with your own Rally, your Blizzard, and your Grav, and, and win the next fight. So next fight is the fight to win because they will finally get a sizable advantage. No point blowing your ultimates here for like a 50-50 chance where you could keep your ultimates and then use them the next fight for like a 99% chance of winning. Hey, Jimin. That was about the first fight. Fuck. All right. See, so yeah, I need to check chat like earlier. You mean this fight? Okay. Alarm is in the correct place. He's in main. Alarm is still in correct place. I mean, I think Alarm is in the correct place throughout the entire fight. Because you you never you normally don't want to move out of main. Main gives you like playing in main. Uh, you see both Zen playing in main as well. Like you see if you did, look at the other the other Zen. Yeah, you see. Oh. Isolate losers if possible. Yeah, you can see the Zen, the enemy Zen also playing in main. Main is just the best place to play. There's, there's no, almost no other places for you to play as a Zen. Sometimes you can move to connector, but it's risky and the line of sight is worse. In main, you can hit anywhere. You literally can hit anywhere while still retaining the best cover in the game. 
on connect like you can't push out this is useless like zen will never be here this area maybe but the line of sight is bad like you can only see like if you play in the connector you can only see like something like 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 this like a diagonal you, you actually don't see a lot of this area if you push out you get to see everything but then you'll put yourself in like a very risky position that a Reinhardt and the Brick can just like push in and just kill you. So most of the time, uh, the Zen is tucked safely in main. Why are you analyzing? Should be doing live commentary on Loki versus Angry Titan. Wait, are they playing already? Fucking hell, dude. Wait, they're playing already? Shit. Oh my god, they're playing already. Okay. Because I wanted to. Wait, it's 2 0 or Okay, you know what? I don't want to take uh yeah, viewers away. If you guys want to watch it, you guys should watch. I'm gonna end my review here. It's 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 a broken review, dude. I haven't even done more than half the map. Look at it. What the fuck? I did 25% of the map. I spent an hour and I talked about 25% of the map. Holy shit, dude. I am a slow motherfucker. Alright. So okay. So if you guys want to watch Atlantic Showdown, please do. I'm gonna end my stream here. What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna watch Atlantic Showdown. So I'm gonna watch how Angry Titans beat the shit out of low key spots. And then wait, who who is playing today? Who is playing today? Thanks for going so in depth. It seems like a storm. That's why you're late to tune in here. Yeah, it seems like a storm. Okay, let us predict. All right, you you guys have predictions as well. Angry Titans low, low key. Uh, we we know what the score will be like. Atlanta Academy versus what I want to see is low key esports versus order esports uh, order from Australia. I want to see them fight Thailand, right? Because I know they're gonna lose to EU and NA, but are they gonna lose to the other small regions? Who's the who's the best small region team? You, you know what I mean? But yeah, I guess it's not as it's not as exciting because it's people are only excited by like the best players in the world playing against each other. People aren't excited by the second best or the third best. That's why you get so many people watching the grand final, but not so many people watching. The loser bracket first round, that sort of stuff. Anyway, okay, let's let's talk about predictions. A Atlanta versus British Hurricane. Hmm. Oh man, this is I, I bet this is gonna be close. I'm gonna give the edge to Atlanta because I think British Hurricane is a very easily scoutable team. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Oh man, I think it's hard. I'm gonna say it's 3 1 or 3 2. It's either 3 1 or 3. I think British Hurricane will take a map, but I think Atlanta will win. I might be wrong. Let's see how it goes. 3 1. 3 2? Uh, 3 2. I'm gonna put it at 3 2. Fiji versus NV. I haven't seen NV. I only I have only seen Fiji Un University, so it's once again it's hard to say. Hmm. I'm gonna give it to Fusion University. I like the way they play. I think I think they, they are aggressive enough to win Envy. Uh yeah. I'm gonna say it's like 4 0 to Fusion University. Or 3 1 to Fusion University. Oh, they actually played before and it was like 3 2 close. Okay, 3 1 3 1 to Fusion University. 3 1. Scrub Cup review when this is Two gold team fighting is pretty entertaining. I mean, I guess it's like a fetish. Like watching two gold teams fight is like a fetish. So like, you know how you know is yeah. I I advocate like a comfortable. Uh, I advocate a healthy sex life, and you know how fetish are healthy between two consenting adults. Yeah, watching two gold teams fight and being entertained by it, it's it's in Overwatch. That's a, that's like a healthy fetish. All right, that's. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I respect your decision. I don't I don't see it the same way, but I respect your decision. Watch party? Minor is doing a watch party? Uh. Talon is the best small region team. I think Talon is the best small region team as well. I'm just I'm just afraid to say Talon is the best small region team because you know why? Because because Talon has three Koreans. And I think I spoke about it before. It doesn't matter whether the Koreans are carrying the other players or everyone's doing equal equally. The moment there are Koreans in your team, it sort of takes it away. It takes away... I don't believe in that myself, but like the general public believe that it takes away from uh, the team because it feels like it isn't a fully Pacific team. It feels like it isn't a fully Brazilian team. I don't believe in it. To me, I think regionalization... We should look at the identity of a team. Uh, yeah, we should just look at identity of a team. If you have a mixed player, that's fine. But that's not what 
the general public believe, right? Most people will go, if you have five Koreans and one, you have six Koreans in your team, that's a, that's a Korean team. Yeah. Maybe in the marketing aspect, we could still say that London Speed Fire is like, it, we can, we, we believe, we, we know that London Speed Fire is like a UK team, right? A British team. But when we talk about the be- like the, the, the best teams are Korean, what everyone knows that that's, we are talking about the roster. We are not talking about like the regionalization, the, the, the public marketing aspect of the team. Uh yeah, that's why I like the Talon thing. I I I, I like Talon, but but I I I never want to use Talon as an example in any argument I have because I know people arguing against me will just say that Talon has three Koreans, right? If I say that Pacific region is the strongest region, right, and then other teams because we have good players in our region, anyone I'm arguing against, their best argument, they're just gonna tell me that hey John, look, you can't use Talon, right? Talon has three Koreans, right? Here, John, let me pull out the stats for you. They are going to pull out the stats. They're going to show me Talon has three Koreans, and that's why it's one-sided. And then they'll say, okay, you know who is second place? Okay, I'll show you guys who is second place. Nova Esports, right? And it was a 4-0 between Talon and Nova Esports. And I'll give you, I'll give it to you, John. I'll give it to you, John. Uh, that, you know, Nova Esports, yeah, they have all Taiwanese and a Singaporean, sorry. This is a fully Pacific team. The coach is Taiwanese as well, so they don't have like a Korean coach or anything. From the coaching staff to the players, this is a fully Pacific team. But they got 4 0 by the team with three Koreans. So what does that tell you, John? See, so I can't argue that Pacific is the best team because they're just gonna use that, and it's hard for me to argue against that. Even if I, even if I, I can, even if I objectively can say that, even if I objectively say that, you know, that 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 Talon, Oputo, Inning, and CQB are great players. And you can see in their play they make that they are better than the other players. I, even if I can objectively say that, it's hard for me to make an argument just because Korean is, Korea is such a strong region. It's like a bittersweet thing. Yeah. TCC has shared many strange fetishes with me and I get uncomfortable around him. Oh yeah, TCC. Yeah, TCC is a, is a, is a, is a very unique man. Let's just say Nova is the best Pacific team. I secretly cheer for Nova more than I cheer for Talon because Nova has a Singaporean and they have Taiwanese as well. So so like countries I'm very familiar with, right? And I love Taiwan. I I, I travel to Taiwan like once every two years, and yeah, and they have a Singaporean. So I got I got to cheer for them, dude. I was like cheering for Nova Esports and Global Esports like all the way. These two teams all the way. Yeah, it's hard. Every time I review Pacific uh, contenders' votes, I always get like sad because the level of play is is not very high. I'm happy because they're improving. I'm sad because it's not very high and the improvement is not fast enough, right? Because you see, if the Korean teams, if this is the improvement, let, let me draw you guys a graph, right? This is the graph. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a grab a graph for you guys, just for you guys. So if, if this is a graph, right? If this is this is an improvement chart, let me draw you guys an improvement chart. So this is this is the time. Right? And over time, Korean teams improve like tremendously like that. I, I don't know whether you guys remember in 2016, right? In 2016, uh NA and EU teams, NA and EU teams were actually better than Korean teams. So in 2016, the best teams in the world were all American teams and European teams. And people say, you know what? I, I remember this very clearly. People say in Reddit that Korea will never be good in an FPS game. That when it comes to an FPS game, you look at Counter-Strike, you look at TF2, the best players in Counter-Strike and TF2, two games that are similar to uh, Overwatch, in terms of like FPS and in terms of like, you know, uh, class-based shooter, in both games, the top players in the world are from the Western Hemisphere, right? They are either, yeah, they're just Western players. So... The Western, this is let's say let's say, let's use Korean. Korean is black. Let's see, let's say Korean is black, All right? So that's the skill level. Oh, so what is this? This is skill level, skill. Korean, Korean is the black line, and then Western is the blue line. So at the start, the te- the Western teams were like that, All right? Better than Korea. You can see, whoa, better than Korea. Look at that, better. Every single tournament, every single tournament, if I you can see the Western team is better. You have N- Team Envy as well. In 2017, Team Envy just beating everyone, right? Uh, winning, winning Apex as well. But slowly, somewhere, somehow, so I think in 2017, this is like maybe 2017, 
2017, like, I don't know, season 1, season 2, Apex, or whatever, you have Rogue trashing everyone. Rogue was trashing all the Korean teams as well. I still remember very clearly, this team called Rogue, smashing all the Korean teams, but in like a month, in a single month, Rogue started getting trash. Their 3 DPS comms started getting trash because Korea, Korean team isn't just about great players. They have great coaching staff as well. So it doesn't matter whether you are you you, you have like a one trick soldier seventy six or like an insane or yeah or like an insane roadhog. Like if you guys remember the selfless comp or like insane tracer, if your composition only relies on solely mechanics and not on coordination and communication, you're gonna lose the Korean team. Because the current team will learn from you in terms of mechanics, and the current team is already better than you in terms of coordination. Yeah. I don't know whether you remember Selfless. There was a coach from Selfless said that Selfless was one of the best team, like top team, number one, top team. And a coach from Selfless, a team, said that he never really coached Selfless. They were just great players. They, they had Dafren inside, if you guys remember Dafren. And does, they didn't even, the coach didn't even coach Selfless. Selfless was the number one team just because they had such great players. But in Korea, it doesn't matter. Right? In Korea, if you don't have a coach, you're fucked. So, yeah. So that's why the Korean teams over time, you know, they caught up and then now you have like this. Yeah, not, okay. Okay, the line is shit, all right? The, the line actually doesn't look like that. I'm just, I'm just, my, my point is somewhere, somehow, the, the Korean teams caught up and are objectively, like, it feels like the region is stronger than the, uh, generally stronger. So where, where's EU then? Okay, EU and NA, like, I'm going to draw them as the same line, the Western players, all right? About the same thing, uh, sa same area. They are about as strong as each other, as we can see from contenders. So where, where is, where's, <laughs> where's Pacific? I'll show you guys where's Pacific. Okay, I'll show you guys where's Australia first. Australia actually has like a insane improvement. So Australia curve is something like, Something, something like, yeah, catch it. Something, something like that. All right, that, that looks like they're gonna beat the American teams. Well, I gotta. You see, my my lines are horrible because they curved. So okay, so that's the Australia team, the Brazilian team, and the the Pacific teams are like that. I'll show you guys how they look like. So we, we haven't really been improving for a very long time. You know why? Well, you know what's happening here? You know what's happening until this line? I know Rogue and Selfless, I said they were relying on mechanics, right? But there was still some semblance of team play. Uh, yeah, the players working together on that. In Pacific, if you look at 2016 to 20, uh, uh, maybe 18, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not fucking around with you guys. I swear to God. Like, there is almost very little teamwork. In all my VOD reviews I do, do, I'm always like frustrated because there's so little teamwork. It's literally just like a very strong Widowmaker. A very strong Winston, a very strong Genji, or maybe you have two or three of these players inside, or you have like a really, really good support player that can sleep, or the Genji slipped out, or whatever, man. Something like that. And it just looks like this, it fucking looks like this. It's, this is just mechanics. And only recently, with the Overwatch League and with more coaches in the scene, if you look at Pacific, right? If you look at Pacific region, look, coaches, USA coach, a Taiwanese coach, a Korean coach. Japanese, uh, this one had a Japanese, uh, eh, Japanese coach, but yeah, Ch Chinese coach, uh, USA coach, Italian coach, Thai Thai Thailand coach, and Australia as well, we have USA coach, so because you do, they don't have enough coaches in the region, they imported, they didn't just import players, they import coaches from other regions as well, like coaches that want to have contenders experience, but couldn't, couldn't really make it to like an NA uh, contenders team, the path to pro now kind of looks like this, the path to pro, the path to pro, even the contenders regions are different. So some the path to pro even have you standing, uh, coaching a, a smaller re smaller contenders region team before you coach like a bigger contenders region team. So that's like a one of the path to pro. Yeah, so path to pro is very elaborate and it's not it's not so simple as contenders. Even different regions of contenders means different things, right? If you coach a better region, chances are. It, it looks better on your portfolio than if you coach a uh, low region. I'm saying generally speaking. I know the exception, uh, the exceptions, but yeah. So only recently do we have like an increase in skill level in Pacific region because we have better coaches, we have slightly better infrastructures, and the players have more experience. But all this time we have wasted because, yeah, coaching was not. It's not a culture in Asia. I remember when I coached my first uh, Pacific team in like 2017, 20, 20 like between 2017 and 2018, uh, a trials team or contenders team, contenders team. And the players did not even believe in coaches. Like 
the players did not believe in coaches at all. They, they were saying stuff like, oh, we, didn't, we don't need a coach. Serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding you. They actually had to vote. And the vote was something like, what, 4-3 or something before they actually decided to vote me in as a coach. Like, it wasn't as though, all right, John, can you please coach us? It wasn't. It was like, no, I don't, I don't, we don't want your service. Yeah, yeah we don't need a coach. You know, we have, then after they lost a couple of games, they, they voted. You know what? I'll allow, we'll allow you, you to help us. You, you want to help us? Like, something like that. It's, it's, it's nothing like what you guys think it is. Yeah, and when I started coaching them, one guy actually told me, one guy actually said, like, on Discord, right, when I was coaching them, one guy actually said to me, John, because uh, I was telling him how to improve his right heart. I say his right heart has a lot of flaws, right? And he's like a 4.2k right heart. So he, he's like a pretty good right heart. And, but I noticed he has a lot of mistakes. And he, he, I, I told him the mistakes. You know what he told me? He said, John, you're a diamond Reinhardt player. At that time, I was diamond, right? Di- John, you're a diamond Reinhardt player. You have no... Wait. I don't think... I think I can teach you a thing about two about Reinhardt. And he was like laughing like in, in like in like a, a mean way. And the, the way he's implying that, you know, like you have no right to teach me because your rank is lower than me. Shut the fuck up. You have no right to teach me. Yeah, that was that was like a Pacific Contenders team, right? In 20, 2018, I think. That was 2018. Yeah. At 2018? Yeah. So that was like the coaching. That was the general, uh, the general, uh, the general like opinion of coaches then. That's why the Pacific team just kind of stagnated because it doesn't matter whether you have a good coach or a bad coach, right? As long as you have a coach, uh, most of the time there will be discussions. Of course, a good coach will, will, will be much better, but normally there'll be a discussions between players and coaching staff and play will evolve, right? Strategies will evolve, coordination will evolve. And then the coach will, of course, improve. If you, if you coach and you're not a good coach, over time, over a year, with more coaches in the scene, coaching ability will improve along with player ability. But because we didn't, we didn't have that, we have been stagnating all these three years and we only started improving maybe in 2018 when contenders started, when there's a little bit more prize pool. Yeah, that's why I think contenders is great because with contenders, because I know people say that before contenders, there was a lot of third-party tournaments and all that, but those third-party tournaments were only in North America and in Europe, right? So only in recent times, in the last two years, where contenders actually became a thing in all the small regions, the structured competition allowed our region to have more coaches, and that enabled our team to improve. So our team, our, our region is finally improving. But it took we wasted like the first two years of our freaking, yeah. Rate of improvement. Wait, I'm supposed to let you guys go off to watch Atlanta region, the Atlanta showdown, but. I'm going to put this up on YouTube because I want people to know that the Pacific has has had a very hard journey and we still have like a long way to go. Uh, why do you, why do I think the level of play is so much lower? Oh, yeah, because of all the things I've explained. Yeah, N- Poor coaches, uh, generally bad attitude between uh, the players and Asia. I don't know whether you guys know this, but in, Overwatch is like have a, big, uh, have a big player base in the Western Hemisphere, right? But in Asia... In Singapore alone, let me tell you guys. In Singapore alone, in Singapore alone, you know what's the biggest, you know what's the biggest uh, game profit? Like where does most of the money, like the game money, goes into mobile phone games, right? Mobile phone games. I don't know whether you guys have heard of this game called Mobile Legends. It's one of the. If you watch YouTube's, you know all those cheap China Chinese knockoff of mobile phone games. Yeah, Mobile Legends is like one of those games. Like one of those knock. I mean, it's not knockoff. I guess they were. Yeah, my, my point is it was it's a mobile phone game and most of the money that goes into game, like most of the money that people spend on games do not go into like triple A games like Call of Duty, uh not not into not even into games like Overwatch that stuff. Most of the money goes into like mobile phone games. I remember some someone guy did like some like Clash Royale, Clash Royale, that sort of stuff. Hearthstone, maybe not Hearthstone, Clash Royale. Uh yeah, I don't know. My 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 aunt my aunt plays like what Angry Birds, that sort of stuff, you know, be I, I don't know, all those, all those kind of games. I, I remember the stats showed like 70 plus percent of Singaporean plays mobile phone game. And the statistics, right, is the same across the, the, the Pacific region. So you go into Thailand, same thing. Most of the money goes into mobile phone games. You go into Japan. Okay, Japan has the third largest, third largest, third largest gaming population in the world. I'm serious. They, they they play a lot of fucking games. They play a lot of fucking games because they are the creator of PS4. Uh, they have Nintendo. 
in Nintendo, and then they just play a lot of games. So guess where most of their money goes into? So even though their population is like the 26 or 27 largest, uh, I know it's 20 something. I don't know the exact number. You can the, you can Google it to check. 26 or 27 like largest population in the world. So not a very big country, right? Not not that many people. But they have the third largest gaming population. Guess where their money goes into? 60 plus percent. I don't know the exact figure again. I know it's. I just remember it's 60 plus percent. Mobile phone games. Literally mobile phone games. These are the people that spend like uh, all these players. The entire Pacific region. Most of us are spending money on mobile phone games, buying cosmetics, buying uh, skins for our freaking avatar and all that. Yeah, and why? You know why? Why is the reason? The most of the, the the main reason is because like across the region. I know it's the exceptions, but across the the whole region, most of the countries they don't have as much money to buy like a proper like ten sixty rig and all that, right? Because a, a desktop is expensive, but everyone has a mobile phone game, uh, mobile phone because mobile phones are cheap, right? Smartphones are cheap, so that's what most people spend their money on. And of course, not to mention that most, uh, there are some countries, yeah. So some of the countries like like Thailand, they have a, the lower GDP. It's like poorer country, that sort of stuff. Objectively speaking, so yeah, you just use a mobile more, much more so like even though jupiter jupiter is a japanese team right and i'm really really impressed by uh, japan because they have a very small population of overwatch players but in like a single in like six months they became one of the top region so i'm pretty impressed by japan as well but once again they don't have much help uh, like i said japan yeah japan third largest gaming but most of them goes into mobile phone game right uh, yeah, and there are other small little stuff. There actually, I did a lot of research on this. There are other small little stuff, but these are like some of the key reasons why Global is a full Singapore team. I do help Global Esports. Like, before I was busy with Overwatch League, I did try to help Global Esports. I did like a couple of VOD reviews with Global, Global Esports and all that, but in this year alone, like, the time zone makes it hard. Second of all, Global Esports, many of the players, they don't, they, they don't, they're not as serious about the game because they have they have real life uh real life take precedent for them, which is not a bad thing. Yeah, but in like NA in America, right? There are a lot of oh shit in America. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of teams that you know the players scream like six hours and they just want to grind and get better. Global esports is the same thing, but in Singapore, you have to, like their priorities on like their school, their their work and everything, which is not a bad thing per se. It's just that they spend a lot less time. Uh, so it's like once again many reasons. One of the one they don't. They don't spend as much time in Overwatch, so I I, I can't really help them as much as I I, I as they, they 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 should need help my help. Uh, two is time zone difference. Yeah, it's just a huge amount of reasons. So maybe three would be they have coaches as well, and I don't want to step in. I don't want to like step into the authority of. I don't want to interrupt the authorities of the the other coaches. Yeah, Australia is that close to EU and My lines are shit. My lines are shit. Yeah. They seem to apply to Chengdu, like they had better teamworks and out usage, they could be really good. Chengdu is a good team. I think Chengdu is a strong team. Chengdu is smash the shit out of like all the small regions and Chengdu will probably smash the shit out of honestly a, a lot of NA and EU teams. I'm not sure how Fusion University versus Chengdu will be like, but I'm pretty sure Chengdu will win. I'm actually quite sure Chengdu will win. Like, yeah, even not even if they don't win, it will be like a very, very close fight. Yeah. Chengdu is like mid-level, right? Middle of the table. I'll say that Fusion University, like the top EU teams and the top NA teams, or at least Fusion University. Fusion University is at least a mid-level Overwatch League team. At least middle of level. Middle of pack. 10 position, 9 position. That's all stuff. Uh, yeah. I, th I think the best contenders team are about middle of the pack. Element, Element Mystic might be a little bit better. Element Mystic might be better. I don't know exactly how good Element Mystic is because they don't play GOATs. Doomfist and Sombra will not work in Overwatch League. But if they play GOATs, I can see their GOATs being very strong. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Imagine an Overwatch League team voting if they get a coach. <laughs> yeah. Is this going to be safe on Twitch? I want to watch this later. It's going to be safe on Twitch. I want to upload on YouTube as well. So the Koreans accelerate the, the growth of the Pacific region. Oh, hey, Xenofly. Did Koreans accelerate the growth of the Pacific region? Oh, that's a that's an interesting question. Uh. Huh. I would say probably, probably. I think if the Pacific region were left on their own, right? If we were just competing against each other. So imagine like, like just Southeast Asia competing against each other. It's just bad. Like Singapore versus Thailand versus Hong Kong. I think it's just bad. Like we won't grow as a region. But now we add in like Japan. We add in like Chi some Chinese coaches, some Taiwanese players. Uh, like Pac we expand what Pacific means. And then we allow mixed rosters. 
uh, I know it's not a nice experience, but it's like a catalyst, I guess. It's a catalyst. It, it, it's not comfortable, but it it's kind of like army, I guess. For for Xenofly, you know, we serve the army, right? Singaporeans serve the army. It's like a catalyst. Uh, arguably, you learn responsibility, and I use the word arguably. Uh, and accountability in the army and you you definitely become a fitter person in the army so that's the same for contenders with koreans when you have co- koreans player entering uh, it doesn't feel that great because you don't win as many games and you don't understand the language so it's harder to work with korean players if they're in your team and it's also hard when you're fighting against them because you're like why did they come our region right but i think it does increase the it does increase competition and it does increase the average level of play yeah I mean, most of the times, countries grow after, like, yeah, I, I, I'm i not going to use, I was going to come up with a metaphor, but it's a shitty metaphor, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Army, what's that? Yeah, Xenofly knows, he's, he's, he's being sarcastic. I was in the army. Yeah. I was in the army. Uh, yeah. But all Singaporeans have to serve the army. I guess I was just unlucky because I was more unlucky than the average people. Well, it sounds like I'm bitching about it. I shouldn't. I shouldn't bitch about it. It's just everyone has to serve the army. But I was like a sergeant in the army in an infantry comp in an infantry battalion. So like compared to other people, I had to do a little bit more shit. I had to do a little bit more like physically strenuous stuff. I can show you guys a couple of photos before we end the stream. We are, we are supposed to watch Atlantic Showdown, but yeah. Uh. So this is this is from wait. How how has the stream How did the stream go into this? Okay, so Yeah. This was this was from like Yeah, so this is the army. Mainly this is this is a, a photo from the army. Yeah. That's a SAR 21 rifle. I, I, I actually have to go back every year to retrain in the army. Uh for the Singaporeans you guys already know what yeah all these photos is more of like the other people. So we learn how to fire the gun and everything. Yeah, so I have to go back in the to the army to uh to retrain. So I have to retrain. To not retrain, but not to get rusty in our skill set. Like we have to still practice how to strip a rifle, assemble a rifle, do marksmanship tests, uh learn how to I don't know, abseil from a helicopter. It's like there's a name for it. Uh coastal hook, which is like attack uh, an island from a boat that's all stuff so you kind of have to rehearse uh, you not rehearse but you have to practice the skill set because after you're out of the army for two years then you you get rusty so you go back every year in my case because i'm coaching the overwatch league right now and overwatch league team i get to not do these things but i have to like submit like a long appeal and all that so i get to not go back because i'm currently working overseas so that's one of the perks of working in an overwatch league team like a unique perk that's only that only belongs to me because i'm a singaporean yeah do I get paid for joining? It's about four hundred dollar a month. Well, I get a little bit more because I'm a commander, so eight hundred dollar. I was a sergeant, sergeant, so a non commissioned officer. That's like a drill sergeant, you know, the, the guy who shouts at people. Yeah, I was one of those people. I, I was the guy who does the sh- do the shouting. So yeah, so coaching it, it actually helped me in my coaching because it, it taught me when to be f- more firm. Like it, 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 it gave it made it allowed me to practice being strict, right? So I could be talking to you guys like right now, but talking to the soldiers is different because in army, in the army discipline is important, right? Because you need to respond to command fast. Because if you're in if you're in a war or if you're in a firefight, you can't just go, hey, hey, can you come and help me with this guy? Hey, this guy's like shooting me. Can you come and help me over? Do you have a magazine left? I only have like 10 bullets left. Can you pass me a magazine? You, you can't be that nice because it's, it's super chaotic. So it's go like, hey, come here, come here. Like, so like as a sergeant, as a sergeant, you learn how to be like strict and firm. You learn how to, Cut like cut the bullshit and then just get to the get to the chase. I don't coach like that. All right, for those of you guys who think, oh holy shit, John coach like that. Hey, right hand, come here. No, I, I don't do that. But it teaches me like the spectrum of of tonality when you're talking to people, right? Like w- along this spectrum, where it is being firm, like being strict is like maybe here. Being firm is maybe here. Being very angry because you need to like sh- prove a point, or at least this guy has been fucking up, been really irresponsible is maybe somewhere here, and and even maybe like being like. Resolving conflicts is, is a thing as well. Yeah. So in the in the army, there was one time where, uh, I I I've, I've talked about this story before. In the army, there was one time where, uh, there was a guy who was drunk. So you're not supposed to drink in the army. This guy somehow managed to smuggle a bottle of beer 
into camp, right? So he smuggled a bottle of beer. He was drunk. And then I, uh, me and another sergeant, we noticed he was drunk. So he was like, hey, Luke, are you drunk? Yeah, I'm going to check your possession. That sort of stuff. I, I think you, you smuggled like beer into the army. And there was like a conflict. So this guy was like, not, this guy was not happy. He was like, no, no f- fuck you, sergeant, that kind of thing. So he was already acting in a way that we can, like, we can court martial him because you're not supposed to say fuck you to a sergeant, right? Because we have higher rank than him, so we could punish him. Uh, we should, we have, we were going to punish him, but this guy, in the middle of this conflict, norm- the punishment was going to be, like, severe, but not that severe. But this guy took out, like, a switchblade. You know what a switchblade is? Like a pocket knife. So he switch uh, a pocket knife. And then he, he was, he was like, pushing us, and he took out a, a pocket knife. So that, and, and tried to, like, run us through with it. So that one was the severe one. So he went to like he went to the detention barracks, like jail for a year or something. I can't remember a year or something. He was handcuffed and all that. So yeah. So that that was a, one of the more severe cases. But there were other cases where you have to like stop fights and uh. So there's the physical uh conflict and then there's the verbal conflict. So you you expected to resolve. That's what I mean by resolving conflict, right? So it 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 does carry a little bit over to coaching because there will always be arguments. There will always be. Uh, there'll always be people that mistrust each other. So resolving conflicts, or at least severe conflicts, allow you to uh, resolve conflicts between two people as well. Because the, the, the basic concept of resolving conflicts remain the same, right? You need to understand both people's POV. You need to make them understand each other. And if that fails, if you're in a position of authority like a coach, you need to start thinking of like secondary steps. Like, do you, can you kick this guy out of the team and get another guy? Right? At a certain point in time, you can't, there are conflicts you can't resolve. There are obstacles that you can't cross. So you need to escalate the, the matter so you, like knowing when to escalate it as is important as well so that's what i guess that's what army taught me yeah oh that's my facebook okay so yeah loki got destroyed by angry tight angry tight that's what much happened talk to us if you were a soldier that would be interesting if you did the whole stream no it, it wouldn't be interesting it yeah it, it, it's really just being like firm and strict and twitch is not about <laughs> Eh, it doesn't matter, man. How do, how do you get the higher role? How did this become, like, an army talk? So, in the Singapore army, you when you join, you have, like, a... This is this is a weird stream. It's like an in- IRL stream or something. It's not an IRL stream, it's like chatting stream. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, uh, when you join the army, right, you have to go through boot camp. That's about three months? Yeah, so in boot camp, because you... When you enter the army for the first time as a civilian, what, what are we used to? We are used to sleeping at 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 3 a.m. We are used to playing computer games. We are used to waking up late during the weekend, that sort of stuff, right? So you're, you're, you're used to civilian life. You're used to decent food. So in these three months, they shave off your head. Like It's just like, for you guys who know what army boot camp is, then like you guys know a little bit about boot camp, then it's the same thing. You shave off your head. You do exercises every day. So you wake up at 5 a.m. Uh, you do like... You run five kilometers. Uh, there's like four miles, and then you eat. You eat like a fuck ton because you need to gain weight, which I obviously didn't manage to. Uh, and then after that, you exercise some more. Then after that, you 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 learn how to strip the rifle. You learn what a rifle means. You learn how important a rifle is. You learn how to fight. So that's an interesting part where you learn. You can you learn how to fight in the army. Uh, a very basic level of fighting, but yeah, nonetheless. So just the basic stuff. Then at the end of the is it three months? I can't even remember whether it's three months. I think it's three, four months? Yeah. At the end of it, uh, a couple of people are, are selected, are, are chosen to go through like a command test. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a camp, like an overnight thing. And and throughout that, we are tested as well. At, at the start of it, we are also tested. Like in the, during the bookend, we are also given like an IQ test. Like before, okay, before the entire army, you are given like an IQ test, like a three-hour IQ test. So they test you mentally in terms of whether you know, pattern recognition that sort of stuff i guess they i don't i don't know man it's, ask my country dude it's i don't i didn't come up with it so they, they give you an iq test there's physical test counts inside as well so you need to pass the physic you need to pass the physical test by quite a bit uh yeah how you talk to and they're always looking at you like they're always looking at you at how you present yourself how you work during the boot camp it's hard to explain it's just many many different uh many different small little things at the end of it they tell you whether they want you to be. They extend it. Uh, yeah. They just tell you. All right. 
instead of after the four months, right, most people go into their vocations. So you, you become like a combat engineer. Engineer, you become like a medic, right? A medic. You become like an infantry soldier. So you become like, I don't know. Yeah, you, you go into different vocations. You become like a scout. Uh, but for the sergeants, for the commanders, like, like because I'm a sergeant, right? I'm a commander. We go into this like special place that's command school and we learn how to command. The small little things. And then after command school, we go in, we, we, we learn one of these vocations so we can command the soldiers of the vocation. You guys get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it, it's fucking, it's fucking complicated.